So now let's talk about one of the biggest problems in chromatography, and that is peak tailing in HPLC. Unfortunately, peaks tail. We don't want them to tail. In theory, we like to think of peaks as, as Gaussian shaped and, and perfectly symmetrical, but the reality is just about everything in chromatography has a slight tail on it, about a 5% tail. We could deal with that, but we don't want that column, we don't want the peak to tail too much. The more it tails, the harder it is to quantify it, right, to measure the area, and also it starts to run into other peaks, so it's, so it's harder to separate things. So this is a major issue that we have to, that we have to deal with. So to me, there's two major things that cause a peak tailing, uh, and they're not related to one another. One is what I call a physical problem, empty space in the system, and one is what I call a chemical problem, uh, acid-base interaction. So let's talk about the physical problem. Physical problem means you have empty space in your system. You've got a void. Um, maybe the top of your column has, has empty space in it because the stationary face has settled. Maybe you have too much tubing in your instrument. Um, maybe you have a fitting that's way too big and, and has empty space. And the reason why that, that affects uh, uh, peaks is imagine a peak as like a, a billion molecules moving through the column, moving through the tubing as one tight little plug. If they hit an open space, let's say they hit a big box, and now the stuff starts to mix. And some goes on the column, some mixes, more goes on the column. So instead of a symmetrical peak, you're going to get a tail. We call that infinite dilution because you're just diluting out that, that tail. So that's a bad thing. Physical problems um, are due to the instrument. So now let me talk about the chemical problem, and then I'll give you the real trick on how to tell the difference, So because they look the same. So the chemical problem is what I call acid-base interaction. Your stationary phase, typical uh, HPLC stationary phase, is based on silica. Silica, the surface itself, is slightly acidic. So the SiOH is an acidic, it's polar, it's weakly acidic, which means the hydrogen can dissociate, can disappear that leaves behind a negative site. So your surface, your column, has a natural negative charge to it. If you have an amine, a base, a basic compound, amines, when they protonate, when they're ionized, they have a positive charge. So I got this positive charge cruising through the column, I got a negative charge on the, uh, on the column itself, and we get adsorption. I call this Velcro because, because adsorption is easy to stick, it's hard to let go, and that's why we get the tail, right? Easy to stick, doesn't let go, so it tails. So what types of, what types of compounds will tail based on this, uh, this mechanism? Uh, bases are the worst. Amines are by far the hardest things to do by HPLC. Second worst, acids. Acids tail the active hydrogen, different mechanism, but the same problem. Um, so uh, bases are worst, acids are next, and then aldehyde or pesticide type compounds that might have the ability to just stick. So bottom line is acids and bases are, are your big problem. So how do we solve this problem? Really simple solution. You buy a column that has no negative sites on it. We call that a base deactivated column. So when you're gonna choose a column in HPLC, first of all, of all the columns out there, there one, there's one stationary phase that dominates, it's a C18. And uh, if you're gonna get a C18, I always tell people buy a good base deactivated C18. What, what they do is they, do, uh, they, they cover the surface so there are no silanols. A couple of different ways to do that. One is called end capping, one is called steric protection. Come back to another video and I'll answer those questions later on. Um, so you buy the right column, the tailing goes away. Uh, and that is the real key. And here's the cool thing, all the columns are the same price. So buy the right column. My favorite column, the Eclipse Plus from, from Agilent. Um, it has, I think, the best basic activation. There's another dozen columns out there that are, I'll say, almost as good. Uh, so there's lots of good ones out there the Agilent Eclipse Plus is, is, is my favorite. Okay, so now we talk about two things that cause tailing. Physical problems, I got bad plumbing in the instrument, or chemical problems, I got acid-base interaction. How do you tell the difference? They both look the same. The way to tell the difference is um, if you inject something that's not an acid or a base, it should not tail, it cannot tail. So if you inject something neutral like toluene or any one of a million compounds, toluene cannot tail, it has no ability to stick. If it does tail, you got a physical problem, fix the tubing. If toluene does not tail, but your peak of interest does, you have an acid-base problem, you got a better column. So, real simple to tell the difference. The other way, the other philosophy I use in troubleshooting this one is, if all the peaks tail, you probably have a physical problem, right? Or they're all bases. But if, if you have 10 peaks and they're all tailing, you probably got a physical problem. If you have 10 peaks and only one of them tails, or even if nine of them tail and one does not, if you have one peak that does not tail, that proves the instrument does not have a physical problem. There's no void in the instrument. 
Does that make sense? So we are, you are one injection away of uh, figuring out what's the cause and then one step away from, from solving that problem. So come back to Axion and we hope to solve more problems.